I just got back from the first C Homeschoolers convention and it was awesome. Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, an MDJD turned stay-at-home homeschooling mom of three kids ages seven, four, and two. We are just wrapping up our very first year of homeschooling and as a final cherry on the top, I went to the inaugural C conference so C Homeschoolers stands for Secular Eclectic Academic Homeschoolers, and their tagline is exclusively secular, inclusively welcoming. I'll put their website down below and also any other relevant links um, that I mention later. So I've been super thrilled to find this community because it's been a great place to discuss different types of curricula, to hear other people's opinions on it, to talk about different activities and different struggles we might encounter as secular homeschoolers in what is predominantly a Christian homeschooling world right now. Um, as the percentage of secular homeschoolers grows, I think that feeling of marginalization will decrease, but certainly organizations like C really help to make you feel like there is a community of like-minded people out there who value secular materials, especially in the area of science, where it can get a little muddled <laughs> in terms of conventional science resources out there in the homeschooling community. So I just got back from their very first inaugural conference in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, which is the most picturesque little town, as you can see. And I was so happy that I went for so many reasons. It was really good to finally, after eight years, take a little vacation by myself for three nights and four days and to just wander around a little town by myself, to go in and out of quaint little shops, to see the trees and the flowers and run into little brooks. It was a wonderful little getaway for me. And the conference itself was chock full of both vendors and great speakers. And I will just highlight a couple of them that I really enjoyed. Um, some of the vendors that I discovered there, some of the vendors that I really wanted to take a look at their materials more closely were Oak Meadow. And they have a completely revamped kind of curricula and their books and everything are very different than kind of the ones you'll see on eBay right now. Um, I had a lot of hesitations about Oak Meadow because it seemed so open-ended that a traditionalist like me would have a really hard time incorporating those more slow learning Waldorf based styles in using Oak Meadow materials. But when you look at their curricula now, it's so well laid out that I think that even a traditionalist like myself could get a lot of value out of it. Um, I will link one of my friend's videos down below everything with heart. Um, Linda Lee has a wonderful unboxing that she just did and she and her son are really enjoying Oak Meadow right now. Uh, another curricula that I wanted to take a look at was Schiller Math. Uh, they are Montessori based and I had never laid eyes on it before. I really liked the scripted nature of the curricula. It's definitely something I'll be looking into for my four-year-old for next year. Another thing I looked into was Pandaya Press and both their real history odysseys and their real science odysseys. Um, I really like the layout of their products. I wanted to get a good um, gander at their workbooks and how the materials were laid out and how much reading was involved. For me, at this stage of this year, I don't think it will be the right fit. And I was really happy though to lay eyes on it. And I definitely think in high school years and even middle school years, I will be revisiting them. Right Start Math was another vendor at the conference and they have a great array of math curricula that involves a lot of game playing with your kids. I definitely wanna incorporate more game playing with my son and so I actually bought a older Right Start Math um, manipulables and games kit from someone in locally who was selling it. Um, and hopefully like we'll incorporate that next year. One of the biggest discoveries I made was Michael Clay Thompson's language arts curricula um, by Royal Fireworks Press. I was so impressed with some of the talks that he gave as well as just the layout of their scope and sequence and the manner in which grammar and language and vocab is presented. I am one of those people who very much dislikes vocab curricula. I find lots of it very pedantic and somewhat mediocre. I feel like a lot of vocab curricula that I see, especially in the workbook format, underestimates the intelligence of our children. I really don't have to teach my child, for example, in Worldly Wise, they had words like steep and capital and my son has known those words very organically for a long time so spending a week or two on words like that seems like a gargantuan waste of time 
just to throw in a big vocab word. While I think that reading quality literature is the very best way to immerse yourself in vocab and let it just seep into you by osmosis, I do think that learning Latin and Greek root words, stem words, suffixes, prefixes can be very useful, especially when it comes to just analyzing words you've never seen before for whatever reason. And Michael Clay Thompson's approach in terms of vocab was exactly what I was looking for. I probably won't get into it next year for second grade, but for third grade and up, I definitely will be buying Michael Clay Thompson's um, vocab series. The grammar series, I don't know that it fits our style so well. I think I do prefer a more traditional workbook format for that, but it's definitely something to look at. He's written a wonderful series of books based on a character called Mud the Fish, and at, through his adventures he discovers different things about grammar and parts of speech and all of that. So definitely look into it if you haven't before. I'll link it down below. Another great vendor that I saw there was Nancy Larson Science. That's the science that we have decided to go with next year and I'm very much looking forward to it so stay tuned for more on that. Nancy Larson Science emphasizes a scripted approach that emphasizes going at the child's pace and allowing them to reflect back their own learning. It's a Socratic method in the sense that a lot of the teaching is question-based instead of lecture-based. And that was one of the things that differentiated Nancy Larson Science for me from Real Science Odyssey at this elementary stage. My child, especially my son who has ADHD, tends to lose focus sometimes if you're just reading a list of facts or trying to go through a page of information. Whereas if you do a question and answer thing where they have the opportunity to tell you their hypothesis or their idea um, and then you can give them what is actually the case, that engages his mind a little bit more. So to each his own and again I will definitely be revisiting and reevaluating my children's learning styles and my teaching style every year as we progress and it probably will change and that's a good thing. One of the vendors that I was thrilled to meet at the conference was Emily Cook from Build Your Library. Emily also vlogs over at ARG Schooling and I will link both of those down below. I'm super excited to use Build Your Library next year. When I first started homeschooling, I looked at both Build Your Library and Bookshark as my two final choices. And I went with Bookshark because I wanted the comfort of a sort of set box curriculum where all the books came and there was the instructor's guide and everything. And now I feel confident enough where I want to try um, Build Your Library, which she has a curriculum guide, but then you s fill in all the books she recommends and you collect all and gather all those sources. Um, I will be incorporating a lot of the materials that we didn't have a chance to finish in Bookshark and I still really adore Bookshark's reading list so we might revisit it, we might flip-flop between the two, I might always kind of combine at least the reading list from Bookshark with Build Your Library and we'll just see how it goes. I will be doing a review later on about my first year with Bookshark and some of my thoughts on that so you know subscribe so you don't miss that. The Build Your Library curriculum does have as its spine story of the world and I know there's a little controversy in the secular uh, community about the Christian worldview of story of the world. I feel competent enough as a reader and as a teacher to sort of edit out or change the parts that I don't believe in or to present them to my child and then explain how different people have different views, etc. The reason I don't mind using Story of the World as a secular homeschooler is because I have yet to find another secular history source that follows that story model. In case you're not familiar with Emily, uh, she just put out a new book about secular homeschooling in a Charlotte Mason style and it's called A Literary Education. I just bought a few autographed copies and I will be giving away one soon so stay tuned for that as well. It's an excellent read and really a valuable resource for a secular homeschooler who values living literature in their home and nature study and a lot of other aspects of Charlotte Mason education. The speakers at the conference were wonderful. There were some technical difficulties as is common with many conferences, especially a first time conference. I was inspired by many of them and there's too many to count and list really. One of the speakers that I got the most from was Corin Barsili Goodwin, I believe, of the um, Gifted Homeschoolers Forum. And this was new to me. I had never actually looked into the Gifted Homeschoolers Forum their Facebook page apparently reaches over a million subscribers. 
daily. So the Gifted Homeschoolers Forum is actually very active on their blog and on their Facebook page in providing resources and support to families who have children who are exceptional or twice exceptional or exceptional cubed, which is having two different things like giftedness and ADHD, for example, along with um, being a minority, which my children are. And I learned so much about both my children and myself from her talks because I grew up as a gifted child. And I think in our generation, especially, people talk about it mostly as just being smart. You know, that, that kid's super, super smart and it becomes sort of a, a intrinsic part of our identity. But nobody ever talks about other things that go along hand in hand with giftedness, like often very asynchronous development where you're a five-year-old who talks like a 10-year-old, but you might you know, have like the emotional um, capacities of like a three-year-old or a four-year-old. And I definitely recognize a lot of pieces of myself in, in her speech and in her materials. I bought, I think, three books from them. They're very slim volumes, which is nice for a busy mom, and they're very inexpensive. And so I will link their website down below as well. And I encourage you, if you have an exceptional child or twice exceptional or exceptional cube child, to look into those resources. I read um, the one on gifted adults, rainforest mind um, in the plane, and it was eye-opening and wonderful, and it was hard not to cry as you read it, um, and I probably did, because I recognized so much of myself in it, and uh, I really do recommend it to any of you whose children are exceptional in any way. Um, It'll offer an insight into their experience and make it easier for you to have compassion and patience when talking to them. So those were my impressions of the very first C Homeschoolers Conference out in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. If you have any questions about the conference, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments down below or even just private message me and email me at contactprojecthappyhome.com. I'll be totally honest and upfront with whatever questions you may have. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day.